Good afternoon, class. In today's video, we're finally getting to relativistic energy. So, in order to do this, and I want to warn you at the beginning, this is more of an advanced video because we're talking, we're dealing with calculus in this one. So, just be aware. And um, if you need to, you know, pause the video at any point, um, take a screenshot of this, and you know, work out the details for yourselves, then that's fine. Please feel free to do that. Um, but here's the de here's the derivation of relativistic kinetic energy because we're going to start there. We're going to get to the general expression in the in the next set of videos, but we're and we're so we're almost there. But we need to get at least kinetic energy done this time. So here we go. We're going to first remember that force is the de um, is the derivative of momentum over with respect to time. So dp dt. Uh, we also remember that kinetic energy is the work needed to accelerate an object from zero to u meters per second. Of course, why u? As in the last few videos, you may remember that I changed uh, what we're using from uh, the velocity from v to u in order to account for the fact that we're in relativistic terms here. So that's just some, you know that's just again semantics. It can be v if you want. I just chose to keep it u to try to keep the um, to keep which variables I'm using relatively constant. Okay, so let's do this. So kinetic energy, it is, it's the, if we're gonna accelerate from something from zero to u, this actually sounds like a definite integral. So here we go. In order to solve for this, we're gonna take our kinetic energy equation, which is, we're taking work, the work equation, we're gonna stick that in here, which is force times distance, and we're gonna integrate that. So we're taking a definite integral of force times distance, which is, um, we're going to be force d f dx, um, but our force, which we recall, is dp dt, and p from our last video or from our previous video on relativistic momentum, all of this stuff has to be taken into account. So now that we have relativistic momentum involved, we we got to take um, we're going to have to substitute that over here, and you know we're in this in this area we're starting to use u substitution. Um, tools in order to solve this and I skipped all of those u substitution tools um, or all those steps for that so if you want to um, you know pause the video and figure out how I got there using u substitution that's a tool I used and there you and then I, I solved it from there so I've got um, d of uh, or the di differential of gamma mu from our from our uh, relativistic momentum video um, and then I've got dx and dt here. Now, I know a lot of times you've been taught in calculus, oh, you can't mix the, the dif differentials here. But, this, but in some cases you can. Um, and this is one of those cases where you can actually say, oh, well, dx, dt, oh, well, that's velocity. So we're gonna, that's gonna, the same as du. So there we go. So now I can, so what I'm doing here is using my, um, like a, a, I'm working on my u substitution, out of my u substitution toolbox. So that's why my dx dt gets changed to just um, a du. So I've got, or I'm, sorry, it's going to be a u over here. So I've got u d of a differential of gamma mu. Now, of course, that this looks pretty, pretty crazy here. Because if this was just u du, it'd be a very easy integral to solve. But now that we're, uh, we have this crazy differential in here, we actually have to figure out what that is, which is why I go to the next step and say, OK, what is that differential of gamma mu? So first I have to get rid of my gamma. I have to actually put everything in terms of as much as in terms of u as I can. So that's why I get d, a differential of mu over square root of one minus u squared over c squared. So when I take the derivative of that, what I find is that that's gonna become m, I'm, m, is a, m, m gets factored out because that's a constant in this case, so then the du goes in here, you take the differential into, this, into the denominator and you get um, one, you know, the square, the, the der derivative of um, one minus u squared over c squared to the negative one half power is gonna be um, one minus u squared over c squared to the ne negative three over two power. So now that I've got that, I, I can change my, uh, my differential of gamma mu I plug all of my results back into the kinetic energy equation. So I got the integral from u to 0 to u of m times 1 minus u squared over c squared um, raised to the negative 3 over 2 power times u du. So now, now, that, I've got a, now that I've got everything in terms of, um, in terms of u and, and the differential du, 
I can now actually take, use my use substitution tools and actually use this, um, actually go right through all of this, um, and then find out that when I, when I take the integral, I've got mc squared out, and that's, it's a common factor between these two terms. I pull that out, and now I'm left with is one over, um, the square root of one minus u squared over c squared minus one. This, of course, is your initial condition. So from there, I can then actually just, um, re if I want to factor this all back in and actually write it in terms that I might have seen before, this would come out to that, this, the result would be kinetic energy is equal to gamma mc squared minus mc squared. Now you might say, wait, so now kinetic energy has two terms in here? And the answer is, yes, it does. So relativistic, so when you have relativistic terms, um, that, so when you have relativistic kinetic energy, it has to have, it'll be this one. So this one will depend on speed because obviously the gamma function does depend on speed. However, because we took an integral and, and because there was an initial condition in there, that actually gives you this concept of what's called rest mass. I could actually have added mc squared to both sides of the equation to put it over here, which would have told you that the kinetic energy at relativistic speeds is gamma mc squared, but there is um, a rest mass, a, a rest energy in there. So, so there's a there's so that means there is an inherent amount of energy that is within that that is just inherent to any any object with mass. So if you've got so you me, anything with mass, we could actually convert that, that, you know, the result of this idea is that you can convert that purely into, into energy. So, and thus, of course, is where um, at the concept of antimatter comes in and, you know, the, the, all those other fun things that we talk about in modern physics. So that's how to get relativistic kinetic energy. Um, in the next video, what I'll do is I'll go over how to um, get the total energy of a system so that we can really see where E equals MC squared comes from. So good luck in your studies and may the force be with you.